Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to the third podcast episode for Fingtem Languages. Um, I'm here today with Kevin Abroad, who is in the UK right now. And so I'm just going to allow you to introduce yourself. Sure. Hello, everyone. Uh, so I am Kevin from the channel Kevin Abroad. And just like Aaron or Fingtem Languages, I do language related videos and I talk about many things like languages and mm. also a bit of culture i guess um yeah you yeah, do that's... videos about like about like living abroad in, in yeah. the uk and stuff right yeah because i live in in england right now and i'm from france originally sure. so i kind of want to do videos that are also for people that want to travel or live abroad as well so right you can do everything yeah <laughs> jack, of, <laughs> jack of all trades yeah exactly <laughs> so kevin and i met uh in person while i was in paris this summer um, and we were, we were only able to get together for like one day, but we made a few yeah. videos together and that was fun. So, um, today we're just going to do some more talking about language related, uh, subjects. Um, while I was in Paris this summer, uh, one of the things that we kind of talked about a lot was, um, I went over to his house for, or to his parents' house, I guess, cause you live in the UK, right? Yeah. But, so, uh, he, he, was, he was just visiting for a short time. Um, so we were hanging out at the house doing a video and I kept singing this song the whole time we were there. And it was this French song, French song called, uh, Il jouait du piano debout. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I don't know, that just got us talking a lot about how, uh, uh, songs are useful in language learning and stuff. So, um. And I just recently, I think last week, maybe this past Monday or something, I uh, I did another video on, on learning languages with music. And it's yeah, funny because yeah. as, as soon as I posted this video, Kevin was on there right away saying like, I remember how you were, you couldn't stop singing the, well, who's that song sung by? Uh, France Gall. Oh yeah, France Gall. Yeah, he's like, That's I I remember you couldn't stop singing that song. And it was funny because that was actually one of the songs that I listed. I left these comments below about different uh, uh, different songs that I've used for learning languages. And that was one of the ones that I, I listed, but he didn't see it. Um, yeah. But yeah. Why? Because I was like on my sofa, not actually watching the video, oh. but list the video. Sure, That's sure. why they made the comments or anything. <laughs> yeah, it's really funny. Just chilling. <laughs> right. So, yeah. So, um, that's just one of the huge areas of language learning that I find to be, uh, or one of the huge, uh, benefits of listening to music in your foreign language. Um, I like, this is stuff that I do. I don't even notice it. I'm sitting there just doing whatever I'm doing. You know, we were preparing to make a video, getting the camera stuff ready, making sure the mics work. Uh, and Kevin, by the way, is way more professional with all that stuff than I am. <laughs> I'm pretty You're professional. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I, I, you know, actually, I started my channel. Um, oh, I lost you there. Lost you for a minute. There, you're back. Okay. Uh, I started my channel using this SLR camera. Uh, you know, it's a very expensive camera that I had bought several years ago. Uh, it was like three thousand dollars or something, um, and I had been kind of getting into Whoa. videography and stuff. Yeah. Now I record all my videos on my iPhone. <laughs> I got kind of lazy. You actually record all your videos on your iPhone. Either my iPhone or my laptop, yeah, or my iPad, yeah. Oh, it's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, the camera is great. It's fine. I, I don't have any complaints, so. Um, yeah, it's been a long time since I've recorded a video on an actual camera. Anyways, all that said, uh, I forgot what we were talking about. Uh, yeah, we were hanging out at the I house, guess... and, and I just couldn't stop singing this song. You just read the piano debout, and, you know, half the time you don't even notice when you're singing it, you know. Um, and so you're just getting well, practice all day long. When you sung it, I was like, I know this song. It's a very popular French song. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's another thing. And I love it. Well, yeah, that's another thing. You know, I I've been learning all these French songs. Uh, you know, older songs that are a little bit more well established. Um, and it's funny when I sing these songs around French people, it's like they're kind of amazed that I know these old songs. You know, uh. And it's, I don't know, it's just funny. So. <laughs> I uh, was impressed. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, one of the things that we wanted to talk about uh, in this uh, video podcast was um, uh, 
if you're a beginner or if you're not quite yet fluent yet, um, just ways of, of getting around that and uh, continuing to progress. Uh, well, it's, and so you brought up, um, while we were talking about this earlier, you brought up a, uh, what was it? I, I don't remember exactly what you were saying. Uh, like ideas of things to talk about. Yeah, like um, you said something along the lines of like when you're not yet fluent, uh, what are the things that yeah. you do to, yeah. What was yes, it? I was basically it's something that kind of came up because yesterday I was doing a live stream on um, yes, well I was doing a live stream. Yeah, I saw that actually. Right. I didn't log in because I was right in the middle of something, but I saw your live stream. Uh, <laughs> next time, next time was a spontaneous yeah. one anyway. Yeah. But yeah, so there was a lot of people like asking me. No, I was trying to talk, and I, like sometimes there was. The, sorry, okay, I'm going to start again. Yeah. <laughs> English. Yeah. So, yeah, so yesterday on the live stream, there was I was trying to speak uh, Spanish because a person asked me, like, oh, can you speak Spanish? I was like, yeah, yeah, I can, of course. So the question they asked me was actually a hard question, but I asked them to ask me a hard question. It was something like, how do you keep motivation in language learning? So I had to answer this question in, in Spanish, which was very difficult. And that's why the uh -huh. idea of the video came, because I was just trying to, like, find ways to express something like there were words I can remember like um, on the contrary or words like that so I kind of had to find a way to um, express yeah. that idea so I think I use like gestures or like <laughs> sure. just saying uh, al contrario I don't even know if that's the right phrase in Spanish but I just use that and hopefully yeah. that makes <laughs> yeah yeah sure so yeah it, it's funny okay. I, that happens to me a lot too when I'm live streaming people will say oh can you speak language x and I'm like yeah I could but I'm live streaming and people are watching and like, you know, most people don't speak Esperanto, so they're just gonna tune out when I start yeah. speaking another language. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes, there was literally speaking four languages, like Portuguese, a bit of Japanese, yeah. um, Spanish, and obviously English. <laughs> sure. That's so funny, it's so messy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is another thing we were talking about actually, because we did that language, that accent video together, is that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, you probably you you could fool me if I didn't know you were not a, a native English speaker from the really? from the UK. Yeah. Now, granted, I'm not super knowledgeable about UK accents, but if I listened to you speak, I wouldn't have expected you were. I would I would say you're probably a British guy. Yeah. Oh, really? um, oh interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So take <laughs> it as a compliment. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know. you know what I I had a similar thing happen to me. Um, although. Probably not to the same extent, but uh, last Thursday I was in my French class, and it's a French cinema class, so there's actually a bunch of native speakers that are from France, and, you know, they're exchange students or something, and they're just like, I don't know, trying to get an easy A in the French cinema class or something, uh, and so there's these two French speakers in my class, and they looked at me and they're like, you know, you have a really strong Quebecois accent. And I was like, well, it's better than saying I have an American accent. <laughs> yeah. I'll take that. Yeah, right. Um, which, granted, I guess when I was hanging out with you in Paris, mm -hmm. I had just spent an entire month in Paris. So I probably had been developing, uh, I wouldn't say a French accent, but probably getting closer going down that way. And then after that, I immediately went straight to Montreal and spent a while there hanging out with with French speakers in Montreal, so I probably started to, to uh, get a little bit of that accent going on too. So yeah, anyways, going back to uh, going back to this topic. So so it sounds like you're talking essentially about uh, the strategies for like circumlocution, right? Yeah, like, yeah. Um, which is important. Um, circumlocution being like talking around what it is you're trying to stay if you don't necessarily always have the words right yeah, so, yeah. like and so actually the example you brought up was uh, uh to the contrary right or au contraire is even the expression in spanish i don't know for sure is it yeah. al contrario i think that that sounds fun. It, this might be now <laughs> my my French, uh, all this French practice I've been doing lately, it might be kicking yeah. in now. But yeah, that sounds fine. I I would say that in uh, al otro lado or something, maybe. Or, 
Um, sometimes I don't know because like in port- I, I get influenced by poetry a lot, and sometimes I don't know where the kind of la- la- line is between Portuguese and Spanish. Sometimes yeah. I feel like am I speaking Portuguese right now or Spanish? Right. Well, that's <laughs> the same thing. I was I was a better Spanish speaker before I started learning French, just <laughs> know, because right? of reasons like this. You know, uh, someone. Someone the other day, my friend came back from Colombia and he asked me, he's like, all right, I couldn't understand when like, um, if, uh, what was it? What was the situation? All right. Uh, if he watches this, I'm going to screw up this, this, uh, this conversation. But essentially what he said is he would like, um, he, he would want someone to take him to the airport and, um, they would say like, oh, no arrivo or something, uh, like. I, I don't arrive at yeah. at the ability to, to bring you to the airport or something like that. And he, it, and he says, a few people said this to me, and I've never heard that uh, in that context. And I think, I'm not sure if I was, if I can actually remember anyone using this phrase with me in Spanish. Um, no arrivo. Hmm. Yeah, um, but... It was in my brain because of people that say, like, je n'arrive pas, I think, in French. Mm. Like, I can't do something, like, I'm not right. able to. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, and I was sitting there for a minute feeling kind of stupid because he knows I speak Spanish, and um, it's really annoying when you speak a language fluently, and then someone asks you a question, and you're like, oh, okay, I have to think about that. Right, like it feels like I shouldn't have to think about that. I should just be able to give them an answer right away. But I think it was some of the French influence made me have to stop and actually think about that. <laughs> but um, yeah, so even if a, an expression that you're trying to use in your target language, I think um, even if it's not necessarily. Um, like a current usage in that language, if it's something that people will still understand anyways, then I don't think it's really a big deal. I'm just getting notifications here. Yeah. yeah, I kind of tell the same thing to my students because I do, you know, as you know, a conversation practice, so I help students practice um, their French. And mm-hmm. sometimes, you know, if they want like an exact word specific phrase, I will give it to them. Sure. But I tell them in an exam or even in a real life situation, if um, you don't know the exact expression, or in fact you don't even know the words for sure, like just make sure like you me- you get your message across is what matters yeah. really. So even if the word you use is not like the specific exact word that you have in English but can't get out in French, it's fine. Like sure. what matters, is able to express yourself. So a lot a lot of people like they kind of get uh, you know um, they get anxious or like they panic because they can't get the right word. But often people will understand you because. I think in most cases, what helps is context, really. You know, even gesture sometimes can get an idea across. So right, yeah, <laughs> it's not true. Boring, you know? it, and sometimes you you can get away with using really strange things. Like the other day, um, I was at a bonfire with just some of my friends from school, and um, this girl is an ex- not an exchange, but you know, she's a, she's an international student from Korea, and. Okay. Um, you know, we're sitting at the bonfire roasting marshmallows or whatever, and she gets smoke in her eyes. And you know that feeling when you're getting a campfire and you, and, and you get that smoke in your eyes and it's just terrible. Yeah. And she goes, oh, my eyes are so spicy. <laughs> and, it is, and several of us were laughing because that was just a, such a funny thing to say. But, um, it, you know, it's it's funny because you know exactly what she meant. Yeah. And because it's just that, that burning sensation in your eyes. But, uh, it, you know, it's not something a native speaker would ever say, but she got her point across really well. And so I don't know. I think yeah. she was kind of embarrassed afterwards. She's like, oh, that's not what you say in English. And we're like, no. <laughs> not really. But, but <laughs> the thing is, like, it's helped in that case, didn't it? Right. Yeah. It, I mean, it got her point across. It communicated exactly what she wanted to say. And. Honestly, like, so, I don't know, maybe I should feel bad for her because we kind of laughed at her, but uh, it it created a funny situation, a funny memory, you know, so um, hopefully she's not too sensitive about that, but, 
you know, we weren't we weren't like judging her or anything. We weren't like yes, you were. Come looking on. down on her. I it it was a funny situation, and we, and we left. You know, um, and I do the but same thing. All the situations. Sorry, I think the good thing about these situations is that even if you embarrass yourself a little bit, then maybe you'll remember the correct word later. True. And you'll have to get up and, and right. then like, like a good way to kind of get it, um, I don't know if that's the right phrase, but ingrained in your memory. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So again, to be clear, you know, I'm the guy that comes on my channel all the time and tells people you need to make lots of mistakes and you have to embarrass yourself. Right. So. Uh, and this is not in any way me looking down on her for, for saying something strange in English. I think it's great, actually. And I think that's exactly what people should do. I remember hearing a story about this guy who was like a Chinese guy who was in the grocery store. And he wanted to find the chicken, but he didn't know how to say chicken. So he went and he got an egg and he said, where is mother? You know. <laughs> well, is that you that told that story? Because I remember that. Actually. Maybe, probably. I've told the story several times, and I just I think I've heard about. I think you. I think I think I said probably. It probably was me. Channel, yeah. I uh, I, <laughs> I've, I've said it in a few of my videos. I probably said it maybe while we were recording together or something. But I find it hilarious, and honestly, I find it awesome because that's exactly what you should do. If you don't know the word, find a way to get creative and 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 speak around it. Because the one thing you don't want is you don't want to stop speaking because you don't know a word and then just say, oh, well, guess I can't communicate my point now, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, for sure. So. Yeah. Also, I think it's a strategy because even I, I mean, I'm obviously very fluent in English, right? But sometimes, like, I just need to kind of express my idea and sometimes the way I express myself is not, like, as a native speaker would or it's not, like, perfect. Like, it's kind of awkward the way I phrase something, but I kind of don't care, just phrase it and hopefully it'll make sense. If it doesn't make sense, I try another way to explain it. But sure. yeah, I mean, that's something that always, is always with you in, when you learn a language, like it will never go away. For sure, you'll have more vocab, you'll be more fluent, etc. But there's always going to be a time every now and then where you don't know exactly how to say something. But yeah. if you kind of can express the idea anyway, then I think that shows how skilled you are speaking a language, sure. I think. That's quite a nice skill to have, actually, I think. Sure. Yeah, yeah, true. And, you know, it's funny because a lot of people have this concept that when they start speaking a language, they want to start speaking it in a way that that no one can tell they're a non-native speaker, you know? Yeah. That when I started learning Spanish, when I really started getting into language learning, that was my goal. I wanted to be able to speak Spanish to the point where people wouldn't be able to recognize me as an American, right? <laughs> and realistically, I don't know why. Like why do you feel the need to put in that much time and effort to just to impress people, I guess? Because, well, now my goal is to be able to communicate as clearly as possible, right? And if I say some things that are slightly strange, you know, use some words that are maybe just a little bit off, but as long as you understand, that's, that's my point, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm still going to have an accent probably, but don't really care about that as un unless it's an accent that stops me from be being able to be understood. So, I don't know. Yeah, I, I try to combat that a little bit. Um, now, granted, if you... If I had the same thing when I was learning English. So, actually, I think that's why I've got a British accent to, to start with. Is because um, even before I went to the UK, we had, like, a phonology class. Oh. And I was, like, working really, really hard to make sure I had, like, a perfect accent. Like, my um, my diphthongs were perfect. My right. triphthongs were perfect, etc. I was working, like, really hard in the... The, like the rare sound and stuff like I was yeah. working really hard at like reading text comparing it to right. the internet or whatever like repeating what the, <laughs> the characters were saying on the TV show like I was working so so hard and now that I've learned linguistics and I kind of um, you know there was a tutor that told, uh, talked to us about like a native speaker what it means and how it's actually quite controversial it kind of made me think that why in a way do we want to sound native when we can't by nature be native it's a bit of a weird one but I feel like it's maybe an ego thing. I think I had a big, a lot of ego. I wanted to impress people and sound not French or whatever for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know. It's an ego thing, don't you think? I don't it know. is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and also I think that partially it stems from misconceptions that people have before they really start getting into language learning. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, when before I really started learning Spanish, which was my first language that I learned, uh, my first second language that I learned, I guess. Um, 
you know, you just have this misconception that some people just go off to the foreign country and then they just learn to speak it like a native speaker and and then that's just it. And then they're fluent just like all other native speakers. You don't you don't realize how much of a spectrum is and how how you just make these tiny, tiny little steps and you never really arrive, you know. Uh, you have this yeah. misconception about some people are fluent and other people are not fluent and that's just it. You know, as if there's a, a black and white divide. Um, and yeah, and so um, it's probably part of it is just misconception because of yeah. that. And also part of it is probably just because, uh, yeah, because of ego, you know. I want yeah. people. To, I want to be so good that uh, so I can really impress people by sounding just like a native speaker. Yeah. yeah, but I think the issue with this um, is that in my my you know um, in my sorry word word word. <laughs> yeah. um, sorry, okay. I'm it's gonna right. Go, it I happens to native that. speakers too. <laughs> <laughs> I should have got. What I mean is like in my history, my like story or my experience. That's what I was looking for. My, in my experience, yeah. like. There was a lot of times, especially in my first year in England, where I was trying to, you know, when I was talking to people, I was being over careful about the way I speak English. I was like trying to mm -hmm. uh, over enunciate. And then there were some people that could tell I was French and that I hated that. Oh, and yeah. I think that can bring frustration when you try to want to be something you cannot be in a way. Yeah. It's a bit like you know, reaching for the stars or the moon or whatever that is the phrase. Sure. <laughs> but, and there's no point really because people will always be able to tell if it's not the accent it's the way you phrase things or if it's not the way you phrase things it's a specific word you're using a bit weird or something is there's always something like sure. it's almost impossible i feel right yeah <laughs> so, yeah. yeah i mean you know it, it's funny how much i a lot of times i say on my channel that you'll never actually reach fully native level you can get really close but you'll never fully get there I get a lot of hate for saying that. It's funny. You know, that's fair, though. I agree with you. Yeah, I mean, it's. I'm not trying to be negative. I'm not trying to do it. I'm just trying to reiterate what the um, what the the literature on the subject is already saying. Um, yeah. And gra I'm happy to be proven wrong. You know, if there's some SLA experts out there that do tests and then find some way that you actually can become native level. That's fine. I'm dispassionate about it, but uh, you know, it's... But I think I think the issue with like native speaker is it's wrong to want to be a native speaker, and I think it's because like I don't know what you think, but that's kind of my opinion. Mm -hmm. Is that traditionally the way people look at languages is from a native speaker perspective, as if native speaker was the only possible goal. But just because you can't be a native speaker doesn't mean you can't be a very good speaker of a language yeah. or an excellent speaker right. language. Native speaker is like a, some kind of a goal, I guess, because, I don't know, native speakers are seen as the pure speakers, the perfect speakers, no accent, sure. perfect vocab, all, you, all, you know, all that stuff. But I think it's the wrong way to see things because just from a newer, newer what's the word, neuro-linguistic yeah. <laughs> point of view, like our brain is shaped differently. Like we don't learn the same way. That's a fact. Sure. Well, almost a fact. But so yeah, yeah well, this, it, it, is, it is a fact that adults do not learn languages the same way that infants learn languages. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's true. And even, I, I like what you said about, about how um, we have this concept that the native speaker is the, like the ideal pinnacle that you need to work towards. Because there is no, like... What does it mean to, to speak like a native speaker of English? That could mean anything, right? Because you're probably starting to speak more like the the native speakers in Brighton, right? Yeah. And then, but if you had moved to America, then you could be learning to speak like the native speakers in, I don't know, in St. Louis or in Boston or you know in in Amarillo. And these are three very different accents. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right, and then not to mention the Irish accent, South African accent, <laughs> accent, the accent. <laughs> you like my accent? <laughs> South African accent, you know the Kiwi accent, Australian accent. You know, there's just, uh, and, and not just accents, but the dialect as a whole. You know, when I say a biscuit, what does that mean to you? Like biscuit that you would eat, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But or what about chips? Where were like? Where would you go to eat chips? So, oh yeah, so chips in England, 
well, it's weird because in French, chips is like crisps, yeah. like the crunchy crisps. But in England, it's like chunky crisps. Right. Yeah, so, sorry, it's, I'm mixing it up now. <laughs> I'm thinking in French. So, <laughs> but yeah, so English chips, yes, like the fries, big, thick right. fries. So, in, so when you go to McDonald's in, in the UK, they sell chips there, right? Well, I think, I'm not a specialist, but I think in McDonald's would be fries, because fries are like French fries. Okay. The chips are very chunky, like they're like... Oh, I got you. Chunky. Okay. Like, that's, I guess that's the difference. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so in, in the <laughs> United <you>. States, <laughs> and, so it's funny because we have these different, like, linguistic categories that don't match up entirely well. In the United States, we have chips and we have French fries, okay? Mm. Or just fries in general, I guess you'd say. So you go yeah. to like a steakhouse and you get the big chunky, we would call them fries, or sometimes you get yeah. waffle fries, you get curly fries, you get all kinds of fries, right? Mm -hmm. And those are the things that you would get in a restaurant with a burger or something. Um, mm -hmm. And then chips come in bags and, you know, you or they'd be, or maybe stacked in a tube like Pringles, that's chips to us. Yeah, so, yeah, okay. So it sounds like what you're saying is it sounds like there's just more of a division in in the UK between chips and fries. Like uh, I, yeah. I don't know if if we have any native UK speakers, then leave a comment down below because I'm actually not sure about this either. But well, I think the difference is yeah. to kind of clarify it is like crisps is what you get in a bag, like a bag of crisps. Right. Sure. Chips is the chunky chips that you would get like on a meal, right? Okay. And then fries or like the French fries, like the very thin fries. It took me like four years to figure this out. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. <laughs> so now I know. <laughs> so that makes sense. But so it sounds like then in England there's a three-way distinction between chips, fries, and crisps. But yep. we we just have a two-way distinction between fries and, and and chips. So do you have crisps then? No, there's nothing we would call crisps. <laughs> that's so funny yeah. if I went to America I would ask for crisps <laughs> yeah people would not know what you're talking about unless they're oh, really not yeah no if you're oh, wow. if you it, it depends on the person obviously like if they go to the UK all the time then they would understand what you mean yeah, yeah, yeah but if you asked my mom for a bag of crisps she'd be like a bag of what <laughs> yeah most people wouldn't even know what you're talking about oh that is so funny yeah. I didn't know that and the same thing with like a jumper that's like a yeah. What is that, like a jacket or a, a sweater? Yeah, so in English, it's like a pullover, I guess. Okay. Is that what you call it, a sweater, I guess? Yeah. Uh, I'm not a fashion <laughs> I person, know. so I don't I know. know. I have... in American like English. <laughs> I, I think a sweater is the same thing as a jumper or some kind of sweater. I don't know. I wear shirts. That's what I wear. <laughs> the one we have in England is a jumper. It's like a Christmas jumper, you know, like the wool clothes. Okay, sure. Yeah? Yep. Um, and sometimes I, I don't like using jumper for some reason I use pullover and I think they understand it because that's what we use in French as well so it's yeah. a bit easier for me <laughs> we sure. say un pullover so right yeah yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's very English though yeah to me <laughs> if you say jumper that's a that's a kind of a crappy movie by the same guy that was in Star Wars <laughs> how so what do you mean I mean it's the name of a movie jumper oh right yeah. <laughs> okay so if I said jumper in America what would it be then I think most people would probably understand that you're talking about some kind of clothing item, if you said right. that. Um, but we would never say, I, I would never say, I'm going to go get my jumper. Yeah. But I think most people would <laughs> at least funny. understand. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've got another funny one like that. Yeah. So um, I've got a friend and she's Australian. And on the first year in Brighton, we were there for the first time together at the same time. Yeah. And she was asking for thongs. Oh yeah. What are thongs for you before I finish? <laughs> what was that? What would thongs be for you? Well, to me, um, well, a thong is like a, it's like a woman's underwear or like yeah, it's right. like lingerie. But in Australia, but apparently in Australia, it's like the the beach like footwear. Yeah, I like guess? flip flops. Where you can the one in right. the, in the, in the, between the two fingers or whatever it's called. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> The flip flops. Um, yeah, the flip -flops. That, it has that meaning here too, but people don't say that anymore. <laughs> it's like, it, I, people would still understand that that used to be. I mean, like, if you read the Bible or something, it might say, like, they wore, you know, they wore thongs. It, you know, like, if it's an old translation of the Bible or something. But 
and people would probably recognize that that's what you meant, but yeah. also, yeah, you have to be really careful. Yeah, that's funny. That's the same thing that, um, same thing happens to me when I went to the UK. I brought this fanny pack. Do you know what a fanny pack is? I don't know, but fanny in English is not yeah. when you use <laughs> So a fanny pack is like, let me see if I can, it's like a, a bag that you, you like strap around right here and then you just put oh, stuff right, in it. Right, right. Okay, it's like a kangaroo pouch. What was that? Oh yeah, I think, I want to say in the UK they call it a bum bag, maybe. Uh, I don't know what they call it actually, I haven't seen them here so much. I think I've heard the phrase bum bag, but we call it a fanny pack. And... <laughs> So fanny in in the UK means vagina, right? Yeah. Yeah, and so I I was talking about that, and then um, what else was there? There was uh, oh yeah, it was summertime, so I brought a bunch of shorts and I brought one pair of pants, one pair of trousers, <laughs> and I was staying with this host family, you know, and I told them I only brought one pair of pants for the whole trip. Um, and I didn't realize that I should have said trousers. Yeah. <laughs> because here in the UK, in the US, here in the UK, here in the US, pants and trousers mean the same thing, but you would generally just yeah. say pants. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Well, say like for the longest of times, I used to say pants, like in, in British English, so pants. Yeah. And then, like, people were always so confused about, oh, just so you know, when I say pants, I mean trousers, always. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll say underwear. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. It's so confusing. It's so funny, though. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know how these, these like, inconsistencies, it's like they just switch, you know? Like, yeah. chips turns to crisps, and, and fries turn to chips, and and get biscuits, and, and... Do you have cookies in the UK? Do people say that? I want to eat a I cookie? I think cookies... Like because I think there's a lot of influence of American culture in England, okay. so usually people know what these things are. For me, cookies, and I think it might be influenced, influence, sorry, by French, is like like cookies with like um, um, chocolate. Um, yeah, like a chocolate chip, chip cookie. You call that? Yeah. 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 yeah so that's what we call cookie, as opposed to just a biscuit in general. Right. So, to us, a cookie and a biscuit are completely different things. Mm. A biscuit is bigger and like fluffier and it's not sweet it's just it's essentially just a piece of bread that's a oh, really? biscuit yeah uh, um, no idea yeah <laughs> you would eat the, like they sell them at kentucky fried chicken um i don't know do you guys have kentucky fried fried chicken yeah kfc yeah we have kfc yeah okay yeah um, <laughs> <It reached> us. <laughs> they, they also have it they also have it in quebec i found this really funny i went to kfc but it's not kfc it's uh it's PFK, right? PFK. Also what? Poulet What's frites to Kentucky, uh, right? <laughs> I know Canadians that translate yeah. like everything. It's right. awesome. It's right. Great. Well, well, language is really political in Quebec, so I don't. I'm not an expert on this, but like even their stop signs, and in in France, stop signs just say stop, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and in in Quebec, it says arrête. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so, I don't know, lots of... Literally everything, I find it fascinating because on the French Wikipedia, um, whenever you look for a title of a movie, I don't know, I don't have a specific example right now. Well, I think I do. So for Hunger Games, for example, I was reading a Wikipedia page because I wanted to know the cast or something like that. Yeah. The name of the cast. And then, like, so I have the French translation, which is Hunger Games. Yeah. And then it's like, Le Jeu de la Fin. And I'm like, oh, that's so funny. They translate everything. Right, right, Yeah. <laughs> That makes yeah. sense in a way because French people they don't know what Hunger Games mean means sorry right. unless they speak English. Sure. So it makes sense to translate, but right. we don't do that in French. France, sorry. Yeah, I noticed <laughs> that a lot of times in Spanish, um, names of movies will be translated. But then when I want to go watch a TV show in Spanish, if it, mm -hmm. well, you know, there's probably some debate to be had about whether I should be watching, uh, you know authentic Spanish material or things that are dubbed into Spanish. But yeah. I really enjoy watching South Park. And so I do, I watch South Park in Spanish, you know, and watch the Big Bang Theory in Spanish. And it's funny because movies, they'll usually translate movie titles, but uh, a lot of times uh, the name of TV shows will just be the English name in a Spanish accent. <laughs> so yeah. 
South Park. Yeah. South Park. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 It's funny. And it, actually, for anyone that's watching this, you can watch a bunch of South Park episodes for free in Spanish on the Comedy Central website. So. Uh, that's good to know. Yeah. I, I might watch I, 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 I like binge, I binge watch them. Yeah. I think it's only in Spanish right now. But uh, South Park is hilarious. That's probably my favorite show. <laughs> uh, it's really yeah. I like it. Yeah. I used to watch it a lot, obviously dubbed in French right. <laughs> when I was younger. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's I don't know. So a long time ago I feel like South Park they just made all of their all the only reason South Park was funny is because they were just so offensive and, and just obscene and over the top, you know? And yeah. that's originally how they were, but like sometime over the past twenty seasons, they've like evolved into this like highly intellectual really thought out plot lines and stuff that are really interconnected and just super fascinating to watch so i don't know it's not it's not normal that a tv show really comes into its own by the 18th season but i think that's what's happened with south park i actually watched watch the written episodes i don't only know the old ones like the first five yeah seasons. I guess. They just they just got laughs because of how like ridiculous and obscene they were, essentially. Yeah. Like there was one episode I think right when they start first started allowing people to use the f word on TV, there was one episode yeah. where the whole point of the episode was just to see how many times they could say the f word in one episode. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, and I think they even had like a little counter on the TV on the um. And the screen counting how many times it was said. Yeah, it's hilarious. It's like a big F word to people not liking the F word. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So, I don't know. Are pe do people get as uptight about that stuff in France? Like swearing on TV. Yeah. It... Um, it's interesting. I think there's definitely some words that are accepted. Uh -huh. I would hear words like merde, like putain, yeah. right. but I wouldn't hear strong words like. I'm, allow me to say them, but yeah. like fils de pute, for example. I wouldn't. I wouldn't hear these words. Like it's quite rare. Like it, uh, uh, you couldn't hear them, but like in uh, you know, uh, um, what's what? Is it PG movies? Do you call that in English? I don't yeah, know. PG is the like child child friendly ones. Yeah, yeah. So uh, if it's not like a, a child or like um, we say too public in French, or like yeah, for yeah. all the all, all or, the yeah, that would be a G movie, a general audience. Yeah, 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 so G movie. See, I don't even yeah. know these words in English. <laughs> but, but yeah, because basically it just works by, in French it works by minus 10, minus 12, minus 16, minus 18, of course. So okay. yeah, so if the movie is minus 16, I think you can just swear. If it's minus okay. 12, I think they would use words, but they won't use overuse them, if that makes sense. Right. They won't, like, abuse the liberty of being able to use swear words, I guess. Right. That's kind of like PG-13 for us. Mm. You have, uh, I, you know, they can say some words that are kind of borderline... Uh, but they don't really use a whole bunch of the, the really bad words. And it's funny, you know, when I was in Quebec, have you ever been to Canada? Never. I wish I had. For oh, man. One day, maybe. <laughs> it's hilarious because the way they swear there is that, um, like, for example, they'll say tabarnak. Oh, it's breaking a bit. Can you Sorry. hear me? They'll, I lost you. They'll say tabarnak. Okay. Meaning, meaning tabernacle. And that's like... Sorry, a, I'm losing you. Oh, you can't hear? Can you hear me yeah, now? Yeah, it's breaking. Oh. Give it a second. Hello. Uh, Hello. You're, you're framing, Testing. you're lucky. Maybe I'll just Maybe. give it a minute. You were kind of breaking up for me earlier, too. Oh, was I? Yeah. I tried to cover up, but he breaks every now and then. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was never real bad. Are, are we good now? Can you hear me? I think I can hear you, at least. That's yeah. good. Yeah, so, <laughs> so in Quebec, one of their worst words that they have is tabernacle, meaning... Tabernacle. <laughs> yeah, tabernacle. <laughs> <laughs> I know some of them. I know they say Chris. Yeah, yeah, Chris. Or Chris the Fifth or something yeah. like that. Or Colis. Like, Mange ta marde. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but no, the, the really funny thing is that when I was in Quebec this past week, or this past month, um... The couch surfing host that I was staying with says, he, I don't know why this was so funny to me, but it just made me crack up. So I, I already knew about the tabarnak thing, but he, what he says is, is for, 
for children or something, or you know, if you catch someone saying the tabarnak word, what they say yeah. is instead you should say tabarnouche because that's not considered to be bad, but everyone uh, still. It's, un- like, it's, it's like shoot for shit. Yeah, or, something. or it's like saying what the heck, right? Or yeah, oh my yeah. gosh, and I don't know. For some reason, it just cracked me up. Cracked yeah. me up. I find, I find the topic of swearing is super interesting, actually. I remember when I was not fluent in English yet, I was watching Desperate Housewives, which is one of my favorite shows ever. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was interesting because they swear a little bit in there, but like some words that I would find super rude in French, like whore, for example, yeah. was a yeah. But whore, if you say like put in French, is one of the strongest words you can use in French. Like right. if you call someone put, like someone will just chase after you or something. Right. <laughs> Again, yeah, yeah. Basically. That's probably, that's probably more that's similar to the B word in English, but yeah. in English, horror is, that's a, that's a, that is a rude word. Like for sure. It's yeah. not, it's not a nice thing to say, but most people probably wouldn't consider it like a cuss word. Yeah. It's kind of like used very easily, but like some words such as shit would never be heard on Desperate Housewives. And for me, okay. shit is like such a mild word. Right. Well, <laughs> is mer- American, so what's your take on in, this? In French, in French is merde. Yeah. Like one of the really bad words, or is that more? It's not a very bad word. I mean, it's not good to say that in public. Obviously, it's never good to swear. Right. But no, I would be comfortable saying "male" with my mom, but I wouldn't say other words right. like I don't know. Well, it depends on the context, but I wouldn't say "fils de pute" in front of my mom. Like I don't like that word. It makes me right. feel comfortable to use it. Sure. Um, which equivalent in English would be "son of a bitch," but "son of a bitch" is way more accepted, I think. Interesting. It's not a nice word. Yeah. They're... But... It, every language has like a it, they're, they're gradients right it, it's not yeah. entirely clear w- that there's like just one line where where the word is that word is now too offensive to say you know it, it, it it's a gradient going you know yeah. ranging from the the completely innocuous to the the most offensive yeah, yeah. you know and it doesn't always line up you know because usually you'll be able to find uh, uh, different words that essentially mean the same thing, but they're not necessarily as uh, yeah. as offensive as each other, you know, so they're kind of crossing back and forth between languages. It's interesting. Yeah. No, it's, it's very interesting. I think it's very, I don't know, I just found it fascinating how also you can't really translate swear words like that drastically or rigidly, you know, like just because setup means bitch, like it's not a good translation. So people sometimes say, oh, how do you translate bitch in French I'm like yeah it's there's no real word so people say salut right. salut is like a slut sure. it's like a very strong word like you wouldn't use that the same way you would in English sure um yeah like at, at work I could say oh what a bitch but yeah. it wouldn't mean like what a slut <laughs> it's not the same thing sure yeah <laughs> so yeah, yeah. It's true, not true. Like the it's very interesting I yeah <laughs> yeah you get you get a lot of very similar words with different uh different Such shades as, I guess? shades of meaning different words yeah yeah yeah, and also like how like the word dick. For sometimes I used to see you know oh. on TV you you see the word dick or what a dick. I'm like, yeah. how do they say it on TV? That sounds like such a rude word for me. Like yeah. it, it sounds like bad originally. <laughs> to me, I don't know. So that's another one of those ones that's kind of on the line between like being an actual swear word and just being kind of more of a rude word. But to me, yeah. I feel like if you say that about a person, then that's more of like. That's a little just more of a rude thing to say. Whereas if you're actually talking about the body part, then yeah. that feels like a little more vulgar. I yeah, guess. that was referring to when people talk about someone else. Yeah, referring to them as oh, what a dick. And yeah, like, it's so a, rude on TV. <laughs> in in that case, when if you're talking about someone else, to me, that's kind of like just calling someone stupid. Clearly, it's not a nice thing to say, but yeah. I don't know. Uh, it's kind of like saying hell too if you you know if you're talking about i don't know um if reading you know hell is in the bible you, you can read that word in the bible and it's not offensive you know uh, but then there's other contexts where people would get offended by you saying it yeah you know, like so, the hell right stuff, yeah. right um, yeah or like when i was a kid my mom we used to get in trouble for saying suck like that oh, really? sucks yeah yeah. That sounds so mild for me, though. It is. It's, I mean, I don't, my mom doesn't really care anymore, I don't think. Or maybe she does. I don't know. <laughs> mom, if you're watching this, I'm sorry for saying suck <laughs> on my channel. <laughs> um, I don't think she really cares anymore. But, yeah, that's such, that's like the most mild thing you can say. It's like saying, oh, darn. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Mm. It reminds me, I, I remember, like, it kind of surprised me because, um, obviously, because I'm a teacher in real life, for those that don't know, um, like, in schools, obviously, I, I love swearing. I swear all the time. It's so bad. <laughs> I need to control myself sometimes. But weirdly enough, I managed to not swear from students, so I will use, like, shoot, crap, or that sucks, or that's a shame, or that kind of stuff. Yeah. I don't know how I'm so good at this, because I swear all the time, literally. Anyway, <laughs> but I remember I used, um, I was living, living with an old lady, like uh, two years ago, three years ago, and I said the word, oh, crap. Obviously, I didn't feel like comfortable sh- swearing in front sure. of her. And I said, oh, uh, I, I don't really like the word crap. And for oh. me, that's like such a polite word. Because like, if I say shit, I'd be un- understanding right. if she said, oh, don't swear. Yeah. Like, crap sounds like such a mild word. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's yeah. It, 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 that's, that's relatively mild. But yeah, they're definitely, especially older people might get offended if you say that. When I lived in El Salvador, there was this thing that we would say all the time. We'd like, um, we'd say "juela," either that or "puchica," and I don't think I don't think that's really common to the Spanish-speaking world. I guess I'm not I really. Was. Yeah, um, th- these are really common words in El Salvador, and I'm not sure if it's just specific to El Salvador or maybe Central America or. Yeah. I'm it's not sure. To me, yeah. yeah. Um, "Juela" is something we just say all the time, and. You know, I just heard my friends saying it all the time because, uh, I don't know, just because that's, that's just what you say, you know. It's it's like saying, wow, essentially. Like, to me, oh, okay. and, you know, as a, as a non-native speaker, I just hear people say, juela, at the same situation where they would say, wow, you know, or they would say, puchica. Those were the, the two main ones. So and, I mean, wow. It's kind of like saying, oh, dang, kind of, you know, but you would say that in any situation where you would also say, wow. So I really just thought this was a word meant for saying, wow, (laughs) right? Uh, And then I heard about this, um, I never met him, but apparently there was one of my friends knew a missionary who came down to Central America and he was like uh, giving a sermon in a church. And he said one of those words, and he did. Apparently, he also didn't know that these were mildly offensive. Um, so afterwards, the pastor or whatever that that owned the church got really offended, and he went up to him and he's like, "You can't be talking with language like that." And and this this missionary goes, "Huela, lo, lo, you know, lo siento," because he didn't realize that that was the word that he was saying that. Uh, that the pastor was offended about. So, That's so awkward. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, literally, in his apology, he used the word again. Yeah, well, I'm lucky. I don't think it's ever happened to me. Yeah. I don't think so. Or oh, worse things have happened to me, but not these things. <laughs> yeah. I've said, I've said a lot of really strange things accidentally. Oh, the main one, I remember, this was one time, uh, I always carry this purse with me wherever I go. Right, and I yeah. I was carrying a comb in my purse, and my mm-hmm. friend was like, "Oh, estoy despeinada," like her hair was all frizzy or something like that, and I wanted yeah. to say, "Oh, I have a comb you can borrow," but instead of saying, "Tengo un peine," I said, "Tengo un peine," which sounds ex- almost exactly the same to me, but instead I of saying, know that word. Pe- "Okay, peine." Okay. Pe- I'm really going to exaggerate this word. Peine yeah, yeah. is a comb. Peine okay. is a penis. Mm. Yeah. So I instead of saying, instead of saying you can borrow my comb, I said you can borrow my penis. <laughs> oh my God, my hair's messy. Here's my penis. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, was, it was really bad. I was, <laughs> of course, they, obviously they knew what I meant because those words are so similar. Yeah. Um, but that's just another one of those things where people just have grace on on non-native speakers, right? Well, like, I've got so many stories like that. Yeah. Obviously, I've been studying French, and I think two of my favorites are what well, a classic one is like instead of saying "baiser," which means to like decrease or like yeah, uh, lower baiser. something, yeah. they say "baiser," which means oh, to, to ki- kiss. Oh, <laughs> it doesn't mean to kiss. Busy. Uh, originally, yes, if you read a classical novel, but now no one will say busy in the sense of like kiss on the cheek gotcha, or on the mouth. Gotcha. Or no one will use it that way, so don't okay. use it. Gotcha. <laughs> Unless you mean fuck. Interesting. Obviously. Good. Good to know. 
Yeah, it's good to know. Mm -hmm. Another one is very interesting. It's a bit of uh, a funny one because this student uh, is actually like native French, but he moved to England, so he kind of forgot his French a bit. It was a bit of a, an interesting mm -hmm. case. But anyway, I want to talk about a movie, uh, La Haine. I don't know if you heard of it. I don't know. Just a movie. Mm -hmm. And he was describing a situation where someone was um, gunning someone, basically, gunning down. And instead of saying, uh, we have a phrase in French which is tirer un coup de feu. Mm -hmm. So you, you pull a shot fire, I guess, it's kind yeah. of hard to translate. Mm -hmm. And what he said instead is tirer un coup. So he, he shortened the phrase, but tirer yeah. un coup means to have, well, have a shag, basically. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so my, me and my and the teacher was correcting, we couldn't stop laughing. It was so funny. Yeah. Well, I was like, do we tell him? Do we tell him? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how just changing a phrase just a little bit changes the whole meaning of it. Like that, yeah, like know? tirer un coup, tirer un coup de feu makes two different, very different meanings. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. It's like the one I always talk about is how if we say, okay, if you said something to me and if I said I could care less, what does that sound yeah. like it means to you? You know what I'm, I mean, are you familiar with that phrase? I'm not well, sure if it's a British I, expression. I couldn't care less. If, like, no, if you say I could care less, you, you say, um, uh, yeah, I, I don't care. Like, I, I don't give a crap. Yeah. But yeah. it makes no but sense. I, I couldn't care less, though. Is it couldn't? I suppose to could care less? I don't even know now. Doesn't matter. You'll anyway. catch... <laughs> so, I don't, I don't know. But you, you hear a lot of people saying, like... For example, I'll, I'll say, Hey, I can't hear you. My, my uh, video is breaking up or something. Or no, let's say, I can hear you, but the, the video isn't working real well, or, or maybe my internet connection isn't working really well, but I can hear you. And then you'll say, I could care less. Oh, well, I wouldn't use it in that way, though. That's not how I know it. Uh, that's maybe, not, that? maybe that's not the best example. Uh, I mean, it doesn't matter, then. Yeah, it means I don't care. But yeah. oh. if, if you say, I could care less, then that entails that you care at least a little bit. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that this is the phrase, isn't it? Right. So it makes no sense. <laughs> Essentially, saying I couldn't care less and I could care less mean basically the same thing. Yeah, I think it's just like um, um what's the word? Like they just kind of it just sounds so similar in a way that they kind of change. But it should be I couldn't care less. I think. I think okay, here's my theory about how this phrase <laughs> came around. <laughs> my theory is that. Saying I could care less probably started off as like an, an intermediate level. Like, um, if someone says, uh, Hey, are you really excited about this thing? Or do you care a whole lot about this thing? And you say, Well, I could care less. Meaning, like, eh, I don't care a ton about it, but I care a little bit about it, so I could care less. Right. But. But because the person was so excited about whatever this thing is, and then to find out that all you have to say is that you could possibly care a little bit less than what you actually do, yeah. to them it just sounds like you don't care, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. after hundreds or thousands of times of people using this phrase in the same meaning, my theory is that that's just how this phrase came to mean I don't care. Of course, that's just me spitballing. Yeah. I, I've done no research on this. I haven't even looked it up in That's a very, in that's a very interesting one, actually. Yeah. So I think what I would say, I mean, I don't really use that phrase anyway, but I would say I couldn't care less. Because mm -hmm. I, 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 I care so little that I really don't give a crap. Like, I don't right. know. That's how it makes more sense to use that one, right? Yeah. No? That, that's the <laughs> way that would make more sense. But ironically, I don't really hear... That's true. I, I don't really hear people say it. Like... The, the thing I hear people say is, I could care less. That's what I hear people say. And I don't really ever hear someone say, oh, I couldn't care less. Because if you were going to say, I couldn't care less, then you would just say, I don't care. Uh, I don't know. But, so, I, I couldn't maybe, care less. Like, that's not a phrase I would ever use. I couldn't care less. It's weird it sounds more better to me than the other one. Yeah. This other one, though, could be said in an ironic way. So that would still work. I don't know. Yeah. I don't <laughs> really... What do you guys think if you watch this video? <laughs> right. It's just funny because if I hear someone say, I could care less, I know instantly, I know exactly what they mean to say. Yeah, yeah. Even though it doesn't mean what the words of their sentence actually would logically mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absent the, the expression. 
<laughs> cool. Well, um, I'm going to get going here. Um, cool. I want to make sure uh, I don't, like, overrun my, my video length and corrupt the file or anything like that if it oh, goes yeah, too totally long. Um, so, anyways, thanks for coming. Uh, to my viewers, thanks for watching. Uh, I highly recommend going out and checking out Kevin Abroad on his channel. Uh, I'll welcome you warmly. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, so if you're interested in language learning and travel and stuff and the things that I talk about on this channel, you will love his channel. So, all right, uh, that's it. Thanks, and we'll see you guys in the next video.